Hey, welcome back guys. So this is Crazy Walder and I figured I would explain to you guys how I managed to finally get my game to run at 60 FPS. Um, I should mention I'm running a Core i7 3770K overclocked to 4 GHz and an R9 290 um, with 16 gigs of RAM uh, for the computer. So I have decent specs, they're not the best, but there are settings that you need to change in order to get this to work. Um, one of the main ones, as it turns out, is actually texture quality. So as it happens, um, if you have a graphics card that's got 4 gigs of RAM, which my card does, um, you need to have your textures on medium. I don't personally notice the difference between medium and high in this game, so I don't think it's too big of a deal, but this is basically what was causing the hitching in my game. Um, so all the hitching and the lag was caused by basically the textures getting um, sent to my graphics card and overflowing the memory in the, v, uh, the VRAM in the card causing the stutter. Now um, something else for those of you that are again on ATI hardware is that you want to turn ambient occlusion to off. Now I know the most recent patch technically forces it off anyway but that's not what it looks like in the game's files. Now me personally I've turned off the motion blur and I turned the visual effects quality to low so that may be the settings that you want to use and I'm going to go ahead and just show this really quickly that I'm not messing around that it is actually working the way it's supposed to so it's going to give it a little bit of time to load the benchmark and you'll see exactly what I mean essentially it stays pretty much stable at 60 FPS throughout um, it doesn't always end up staying there you know it dips into the 58s 59s but all in all, it's not too bad. So I'm just going to kind of let this run so you guys can see what I mean um, as we're doing this. So you can just keep watching the FPS counter down there. Again, the texture settings are set to medium. Uh, visual effects quality is basically low. And I've got motion blur and ambient occlusion set to off. So as you can see, no hitching, um, no visual artifacting going on. And it's running completely fine. So I'm going to go ahead and quit this now um, as it's already run its course quite significantly and I'm going to return to the main menu. So uh, one of the things that I'm going to go ahead and do to show you guys exactly what you need to get this going is um, actually first of all this. So in order for you to be able to get your game to the state that it's currently at you're going to need to modify some of the game's files um, unfortunately the game files are locked on Windows 10 but I'm gonna basically go over this so you guys can kind of see um, exactly what it is that you need to do to get this going so you're going to want to navigate to this um, now it may be different for you if you have your Windows app set to a different folder um, in which case you know you just want to navigate to that Windows apps folder but typically it should be located here which is C slash program files slash Windows apps it's not going to be in the x86 folder since it's a 64-bit application so what's going to happen is the first thing you're going to see is this screen uh, which is going to tell you that you don't have permission to access that folder. So you're just going to go ahead and hit continue there and it's going to be saying that you've been denied access because Microsoft. So what you're going to do is you're going to go ahead and hit that security tab and you don't want to hit close. So go to the security tab. You want to click on the advanced, which is going to be down here. So you're going to hit that button. You're going to see something like this. It's going to tell you something along the lines of can display current owner or the owner will be something like trusted installer or Microsoft. It doesn't really matter. But you're going to go ahead and hit the change link up here. And the next thing you're going to do is down here in the enter the object name to select, you're going to enter your Microsoft Live ID or your Windows 8 username. So for example, if your name happens to be Justin or Jake or whatever you would just enter that and hit OK if that doesn't work just enter in your email that you use for your Microsoft account to log in and that should get you past this step so now after you do that you hit OK and then what's going to end up happening is you'll see a screen that looks something like this and I like to click apply instead of just hitting OK instead of what it says up here and then hit OK afterwards but it really doesn't matter you can just hit um, OK and that should get you through that part now the issue is this isn't um, the part where you're done the next thing you're going to want to do and I'm going to go into this in a little bit more detail here is you want to go to your file explorer you want to go to this PC and then you're going to want to go to where your Windows apps are so program files Windows apps which will now be a folder that's no longer hidden 
and then you're going to try and look for a folder called Microsoft Delta PC 1600. Um, they may change the numbers as the game gets updated, but this is actually where Gears of War is located. Um, as you can see, it's got a very similar layout to the original game on Windows. It's got assets, engine, and war game. Now, before you actually are able to gain full access to this folder, you're going to go into properties, and you're going to go into the security section here, and you're going to go ahead and hit advanced. Once you do that, you're going to go ahead and hit the change button again, and just as you did before, enter your Windows username or ID, and you're going to hit OK. I don't, I've already done this, so I don't need to do that. Um, once you've done that, what you're going to go ahead and want to do is you're gonna, gonna go ahead to click on administrators and also the users and you're gonna hit edit and once you do that you wanna hit on full control to allow you to have full control of that folder otherwise the game will not allow you to move anything or touch anything or even open the folder sometimes because again Microsoft just decided to lock things down now you're still not done I know it's kinda of ridiculous but as it happens um, you know you do need to do a couple more steps to get this going so you're gonna hit um, the engine folder and you're gonna go to config and you're actually going to look for this file called base engine.ini now this is where things get a little bit more complicated what you're going to need to do is you're actually going to need to move that folder to for example your desktop somewhere that's not in here ideally uh, this is the way I did it it seems easier to do it this way and you're gonna open it and the next thing that you're going to actually look for is you're going to look for the cache. Um, this is pretty important because the the cache is basically what allows the game to sort of store additional files in memory while it's loading certain scenes. Now I've set mine to 496. Um, you can do 2048 or any number of those powers. Um, I just chose to have 4096 randomly. Um, I do have 16 gigs of RAM so it's not that big of a deal. It's just nice for the game to have that extra memory to use because the default setting is 30 which is basically nothing. Um, now I don't know if this makes a huge difference but this is just the way I did it so I recommend that you guys do the same thing. After you've changed this setting, you want to go ahead and look for something that's actually called Physics X or PhysX. Um, now, it may be above, and what you want to go ahead and do is um, you want to go and find Disable Physics X Hardware Support, and you want to set that one to um, to false. So, basically, what that means is you're going to disable the physics x hardware that's going to be on there um, that way what ends up happening is the game will no longer be using the physics x hardware support which is used by nvidia uh, now this is primarily for ati users again if you're an nvidia user this doesn't really apply to you that much anymore and the next step because we're still not done is you want to actually find uh, i believe it's just motion blur or it could be blur and you want to look down in this case and I've set my motion blur to false and I've also set force motion blur to false as well and motion blur scanning to zero and the reason for this is because it does use additional processes and I believe that on ATI hardware it's using some sort of NVIDIA code and therefore um, the CUDA cores which don't exist on ATI cars, cards um, which again makes the game slow down so those are the settings that I've ended up changing in my base engine dot any uh, once you've completed this step what you want to go ahead and do is you want to save as and you save this file as some other file and it's going to have a dot text extension so what you're going to need to do is after you've saved it to wherever such as your desktop you're going to need to go back and basically delete the dot text extension and leave it as any and what you're going to go ahead and do then is you're going to basically move that file um, back into this folder. And this is where those user permissions earlier come in handy because that will allow you to have full access to this. Now just in case you are still unable to move this file into the folder in here, there is a program called Move on Boot, which will basically allow you to move the file um, once your computer reboots. This is actually the way that I ended up doing it. 
it so that I didn't have to go through the extra admin steps. Um, but you can just basically give yourself the rights to the folder so that you are able to basically access that folder to move files into it. Um, I'm going to provide you guys with the links to move on boot so that you can actually see how this works. If you end up having um, problems with the complications you know of the folder uh, you know if it's too many steps for you there's also a program called take ownership EX which allows you to set those admin settings by just basically clicking a couple of buttons for that folder so that's another option for those of you that want to save some time um, it will allow you to take full control of the folder without having to do the extra manual work so I'm gonna drop those links into the the description below of the video and that should get you guys going um, this way you know you'll be able to get full access to the frames per second that the game is supposed to be running at so hopefully uh, 60 FPS I believe there are limits to what the FPS rate is in um, in the game itself and you may be able to remove those if you dig deep enough it's a fairly common base engine so if you've ever worked with any of the any files for Unreal Engine 3 games this is going to be very similar because Gears Ultimate basically runs on the most up-to-date version of Unreal Engine 3 with some code steal from Unreal Engine 4 for the uh, lighting for the global illumination. So it's very similar in terms of the, the base that it uses in that sense, and so the editing should be fairly easy to you guys. So again, if you know if this video helped you guys out, let me know. I figured I'd share what I found so that others can get better frame rates for the game. I feel like it's been a fairly botched ports so far. Um, I don't feel like they did a great job explaining everything to everyone. So as it stands, I think this um, this is something that Microsoft needs to get on, and hopefully the new drivers for ATI and hopefully NVIDIA as well resolve the issues that the game has. But in its current state, unless you do these modifications, it seems to not run very well at all. So do these at your own risk. Um, if the game does break for you, I'm not responsible for that, but if you follow the steps that I've outlined outlined in this video, it should get you up and running. So I'll see you guys in my next video, and until then,